हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम निधि जैन आई एम अ साइंस टीचर एट बी के पाटिल मेमोरियल स्कूल पुणे आई सी दैट स्टूडेंट फाइंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइट डिफिकल्ट एंड एब्स्ट्रैक्ट स्पेशली वेन इट कम्स टू रे डाइग्राम दे आर अफ्रेड ऑफ इट इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस हाउ वी कैन मेक साइंस एंजॉयबल फॉर आर स्टूडेंट्स एंड इम्प्रूव द क्लास पार्टिसिपेशन I'll be sharing some of the activities that I tried in my class and the way it turned out. I explained few hands-on activities that I adopted to teach refraction of light for 7 to 9 standard students. These activities helped my students to understand refraction of light. They could differentiate between reflection and refraction of light and also identify different types of lenses. At the beginning of the session I ensured that the students knew about the rectilinear behavior of light and the laws of reflection i introduced the topic with the activity for this activity i used a transparent glass some water and a print out of an arrow as you see here when we see the arrow through the empty glass the arrow looks as it is but when we see it through the water filled in the glass we see that the arrow is flipped arrow Isn't this amazing? After the activity I asked few questions to my students like when we see the arrow through the empty glass we see it as it is and what is the reason but when we see the arrow through water filled glass we see the arrow as flipped what is the reason for it so can you see such things in your daily life this is a very simple activity which made students think about this phenomenon After this introductory activity I detailed the term refraction of light how different media can lead to refraction of light and why do we see the path of light has changed so the students were very curious to see refraction of light through different media I demonstrated this using an activity for this activity I used a bottle as you see here it is filled with water detol a laser and an incense stick add 2 3 drops of detol in the bottle now add some smoke above the water medium using the incense stick now point the laser beam in the bottle and observe the light behavior i turned off the lights while demonstrating this activity for better results along with this activity you can also demonstrate an activity using water glass and a pencil after this i posed a few questions to my students when light is passed through the smoke into the water what do you observe does light still follow rectilinear path where will the normal be and how can the angle of incidence and angle of refraction be measured what is the reason for refraction what is importance of refractive index The last question led us to discuss Snell's law. I explained the laws of refraction and compared them with laws of reflection as well. The incident ray, refracted ray and the normal to the interface of two media at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane. The ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant. This is also known as Snell's law of refraction. This activity helps students to study normal, incident ray, refracted ray and refractive index. I demonstrated an activity which helps students to understand the concept of lenses and uses of it. For this activity we will need a convex lens, lens stand, candle and a card sheet for projection. Place the convex lens in between the candle and card sheet and adjust the position of the lens in such a way that you see the image on the card sheet. The students noted down their observations. In the same activity I showed the virtual image formed by a concave lens as well. After this activity I asked following questions to my students like from which lens did we get the flipped image is there a change in the size of images i highlighted the differences in the size of image formed by concave and convex lenses 
and also by the mirrors. I explain types of lenses, mirrors and ray diagrams. Later we discussed about real and virtual images. I closed the session with the following questions. Why does light deviate from its path when it enters a different medium? What is refraction? Where should an object be placed so that a real and inverted image of the same size is formed using a convex lens? What does the extent of bending of light depend on? Teaching using these activities was really interesting and students also enjoyed a lot. I personally experienced while demonstrating these activities, students could visualize and they build upon the concept. They could retain the concepts for longer time. Even the quietest of the student in the class started asking questions. I also got real-time feedback about the students understanding about the topic from the array of questions they were asking. Let's make science even more lively. Do try these activities in your class and let us know your feedback. The detailed lesson plan is given in the description box. Thanks for watching.